Hello again and welcome back to Ruby the Elite. And today we have the continuation, volume 3 of our 1985 Honda Elite 250 restoration. Broke it up there and took a big breath. Well, you could see how far along we've came without me giving too much away. We're going to go and continue on today though with our variator and go from there. Everything will fall into place, but let's get started with where we left off. All right, back to the variator, talking about these slides. When you have them put incorrectly, the RAM plate will move up and down nice and freely. And this entire variator is all beautified and ready to go on the bike. Okay, let's start talking about the other half of our CVT, the clutch. And this clutch has seen a better day for sure. Look at these weights. They are very worn down. These are what engage with your bell that make your bike move. Over time, they must be replaced. Look at how pretty these are. Nice and thick material on the weights. The spring that is on this, the contra spring. Nice and brand new, everything nice new. Springs underneath here, under this cover, new. Everything looks beautiful, the bearing looks nice. All for your price of 79 bucks. I know, mm -hmm. it's not a Honda part. It bothers me, you know it does. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, because look at these weights. What do you do about them? Well, you can send them out to get redone. Just remove this nut, remove each one of the springs that hold this on. You take these weights off of the clutch and you mail them to a guy in Michigan. He will resurface them for around $50. And that'll put a whole brand new material on each one of these weights. But hold on, what about the springs? What about everything else that's on this new one? You're going to put brand new resurfaced weights on an old clutch with old springs. I don't think you're still going to get the performance that you would out of this brand new aftermarket clutch. We're going to find out. I don't want to put all my faith in this thing yet. I'm going to let it roll for a while and see how it does. And of course, put this into my parts bin. You can see how they look the same even from the bottom. I think overall we should be in good shape. Putting the new one in, I guess in time we will see. And I will get back to you all and give you an update after I've had a chance to use this for a while. Just to show you as well, it also came with a brand new bell. And the bell looks identical. I don't know, but uh, it's going to be interesting to try it out. I didn't realize, but my Elite also is a bird feeder. You got a bunch of bird seed in here. I wonder how that got in. Well, it's pretty easy to figure out. The bottom of the bike has got a vent. Hey, look at this. Just keeps on rolling out of there. We'll just move them over here into our oil pan. No big deal. It's like a little slot machine. So I'll clean all these out of there and there is a ton in here. So that tells you that the bike may have been stored outside. Who knows, maybe a rodent was putting these in there. I don't know. I didn't find anything but seeds. And here's where they put them in. They were climbing or flying or doing whatever under here and storing them for a later date. Hopefully uh, that's the last I've seen of them. And using some Simply Green, well, except on that cable, everything on the inside came out nice after we cleaned out all the old seeds. So let's go ahead and install our variator next. Alright, the dry boss and variator in place and uh, look very nice 
Let's go ahead and put on the belt and clutch next. The more simple way to do this, you really need to get that belt real deep into that crevice of the clutch in order for you to get the belt far enough left to get the drive face on. If I was to try to put it on now, I'd mess the splines all up. Don't want to do that. You want to grab the belt using the boss and the clutch as leverage. And as you move closer and closer to that clutch, it will allow it to go deeper in. And then you can get that belt to the left of the boss. And then your drive face will go on to those splines with no problem. Just finished putting the two nuts on. The drive face went on with no issue. Dr. Pulley sliders and our nicely cleaned out variator. Brand new clutch belt and clutch. Finally, brand new bando belt made in Japan. Hopefully this combination of new parts will help the bike run at peak performance like it did in 1985. I guess we'll see. I just slid our rim on with our brand new rubber and definitely an improvement. Plenty of room all the way around using this size tire. The 130 was just too big. I do not want to be bodding them out every time I hit a bump. I'm glad I made this choice to go one size smaller to what's supposed to be on the bike. How's that swing arm look with a nice coat of paint on it? Even though you can't see it, it looks pretty good. Moving on to the shocks, looking forward to that. Also, take a look, I got my exhaust gasket. It'll be nice to install something that was completely missing from the bike. <laughs> I just replaced the first one and the second bed spring is about to come off now. Going once, going twice, anybody want them? No sale. We need to go ahead and remove the bushing and the eye off the old shock onto the new. Very simple to do. I already showed you that on that other shock. Just using a screwdriver, light tap there in the middle, it'll come right out and easy to install. And it's nice and tight, no problem. The old rubber is in great shape, even though it's 35 years old. And for some eight-year-old shocks, they look to be in fabulous condition. Just to give you some background on these, there really wasn't anything wrong with them. I just wanted to try out the YSS shocks, so I bought those and I put these in my parts bin. I didn't know that I'd be reusing them again. I actually considered using them on my small little Elite 50s, but they were too long. So they waited and waited until I bought this bike. And I'm glad I held on to them because they look like they were made for it. A huge upgrade. The stability should be so much better. I can't wait to try them out. The exhaust gasket that was missing. The replacement arrived. I'm going to go ahead and install it. And it just sits just like that. And then when you put your exhaust on, it makes for a nice tight seal. And then you don't have any air leaks. Definitely an improvement by having that in place. After a couple of coats of our 2000 degree paint, the exhaust looks pretty. The new shocks in place, the new rubber back there, the rims all cleaned up. We've come a long way from when we started. It's uh, looking pretty nice. Let's keep going though. Keep going. The next thing we're going to go ahead and address is the final drive oil and the reason why we're doing that is we can't put the transmission cover back on until after this is done since that cover kind of hides the bolts this bottom bolt this is where you let out all the old nastiness that's in there it's gonna come out like a very thick green almost paste and out of all the bikes I've ever owned, all the old bikes, this is never done. I'm not sure why, but it's in the maintenance manual. It's part of the schedule. It's just never performed. Every single time it comes out like this green nastiness you're about to see compile. And look at that moat of nasty, gross green. We're going to take the top bolt off as well. There is a washer, a ceiling washer around both of these. Keep that in mind. 
and I recommend to always replace it. I've heard of some folks say, well, look, if it looks fine, put it back. No, it's not fine. Always replace those. It shows us in the maintenance manual to use 150 milliliters of Honda 10W30 or equivalent for final reduction. I know some of you like to use gear oil. I use what's recommended in the service manual. It was good for the bike when it was new, so that's good enough for me. I use my dry syringe, just putting it in the hole and pumping some air in, and that will push all the little bit of remaining oil out. And I just keep on doing this until I have nothing left in there. And eventually it will all come out. And we are back to our ceiling washer kit once again. This kit is worth its weight in gold. Or at least copper. You can see I've got the two new ones on. We're going to go ahead and put in our first 100 milliliters of oil. Why do I use these syringes? Again, because they are so easy to apply the oil. You know exactly how much is going in. And there's no mess. That's the big deal there. There's no mess. You just put in the oil and you're done. Here's the second 50. Almost done. And that is it, folks. 150 milliliters or 0.15 liters, just as the service manual had indicated. Now all we need to do is go ahead and apply our new top ceiling washer with bolt lock it all up and we are done do not reuse the ceiling washers there is no reason to not use a new one tighten it up now you don't have to worry about any leaks with the oil replaced I went ahead and reinstalled the transmission cover newly painted just a couple of bolts in the middle hold that on along with a couple on the bottom now I'm starting to take a look at what we need to do as far as the air box. And we have a bolt that's got to go there. We've got to reinstall that. A bolt there. And there is cables that we have to reroute to make sure that they're all nice and cleanly put back on the bike. We have a bolt back here. And we also are looking at the clearance of our shock. No worries about that. It's going to fit in there perfect without any rubbing. The belt case cover element that is probably forgotten by most. I just got done cleaning it and it's ready to be reinstalled. Make sure you install the chamber first before the rest of the air box. It makes for a much easier installation. It's tough to get this band screwed down if you do it in the reverse order. Keep that in mind. All the nuts and bolts back on. Now we've got our air filter. We're going to put the brand spanking new one on. Why use the old? This bike deserves to have the new one installed. Now that we put the cover back on, we went through everything and made sure it was safe. We upgraded a lot of parts. Now it's optimized and we also beautified it. What a difference from before. You know, the cover of your bike closes off most of this. Keep that in mind when you have a nice paneled bike. Did you take the panel off and address any of this? You may want to think about doing that. But let's move on. All right, let's get cool with the coolant replacement. Our reservoir, which doesn't look like there's anything in there. It's definitely not at the height it should be. And then here is our radiator cap. We've got our long container to make sure we catch all the old coolant. And right here, as you can see, this bolt. This is the bolt that you remove in order to get all the old coolant out. No worries there. Just make sure that you place this so that you don't get any spills. I had to cut the ceiling washer off of this particular bolt. That does happen. 
Just have some wire cutters on hand. It'll make easy work of it. This ceiling washer kit, just so you know I paid $10.99. I looked it up for y'all. If you go to buy one ceiling washer directly from Honda, it could be 2 to $3 for one. I think I've used this kit 15 times already. The coolant that I'm using is the HP Pro Honda Coolant 5050 Blend. Recommended by me and anybody who cares about Honda. Pour it in slow. And make sure that you have a rag going around the top to cover up your paint. Very easy to change the coolant on a Honda. Much easier than that Yamaha it's next to. Once you get done, you're going to turn the bike on, look for bubbles, and keep on adding until the bubbles are gone. It won't take long. It didn't take me very long. And then you just go ahead and top it off in your reservoir. My reservoir was very clean for whatever reason. It must have been clean sometime in its life. All I had to do was fill it up and I was done. Now on to the oil change and our drain nut has seen some better days but it still is removable thank goodness. But we don't have a drain nut like the 86 on. The 85 when you remove this, this is how you get all the oil out. And because it looks so bad I ended up buying this new kit very early on. The only thing I won't use out of the new kit is the spring. The original spring is a lot longer and I would rather use the original equipment if I can. Something I noticed though when I pulled it out, it was in the wrong direction. Which doesn't surprise me over time. People forget which way they put it in. And in this case, they had it going in so that the large end was on the back and the small end was what was inserted and that's actually backwards. And of course, I would refer to my service manual, and it shows you right there. Now, that other spring may work. I just didn't want to use it because if there's nothing wrong with the one I have, I'd rather use the Honda part, always. And then you just push it in and put the new nut on. Fill it up with some brand new Honda 10W40, and you're all set. Let's go back and talk about our front brake. You didn't think I was going to leave it all filthy like that, did you, and put the new brake pads on? No. We're going to go through and we're going to clean all the old grease out of it. And in order for us to do that, we have to take it apart. It's just a few pieces. It's really not that big of a deal. We'll go through and get the greaser in all these little areas just to clean it all out. Then once we do, we'll apply the brand new grease just in the areas that we want it. Of course we want it in the hole like it is right now. But we just don't want anything around the outside. And you can see there is some on the outside of this. It's amazing what some degreaser can do. We'll apply the new grease in the center where it belongs along with these two areas here lightly. Hopefully it'll stay there in the future instead of being on the outside. What we're going to use is this drum brake wheel bearing grease. And once we install it with some Q-tips, then we'll put some also onto the rest of the parts that we have and put it all back together again. And we put some on the gear along with the shaft, sliding it back down. And hopefully that gasket will keep it nice and greasy in there and dry on the rest of the brake. Now I've got the new pads installed and it looks beautiful under here like brand spanking new. Hopefully it's going to really help our stopping power. On the other side I did take this all apart as well. Just clean it up and reinstalled it. It's just one nut that holds that on. Now that we're going to go put it back on the bike I did notice that when you look in the service manual, the axle says it's supposed to go in this way. But when I took it off the bike, it was coming in from the other side. I'm not sure if it matters or not. More than likely it doesn't. But just so you know, in the service manual, it is pointing a certain direction. I put a tiny bit of the grease on that as well, just to make sure. 
but you can see it's going in that way, so I reinstalled it the way that the manual states. Now everything is back together again. I've already put on my speed line and my brake cable, and hopefully it's going to give me great stopping power for a long time. Let's talk about the Petcock, the fuel line, and the vacuum line. Obviously somewhere in this bike's history these have been messed with. Each one of these should have a nice clip on them, making sure that the hoses are staying in place. I'm not exactly sure why these were never reinstalled. Well, that's probably true. But I have a brand new kit I just bought, a fuel line hose tubing clip kit. All different sizes. Hopefully I'll be able to use these to get them all put back together the way they should be. I purchased an identical OEM fuel filter. I'll go ahead and remove the old one out of the rubber sleeve and put in the brand new one. First take a look at the difference between the two. You can see the one on top has definitely been used. What do we have here? We've got missing bolts. Oh, hello again Mr. Pizza Pointer. I haven't seen you in a while. I'm glad that you came back to show us the obvious bolts that should have been put back again in history somewhere they forgot to put two bolts that hold the gas tank on. I went ahead and pulled out the two that were on the side. I figured in my bag here this is a bag of all old bolts from old bikes that I parted out. I always keep the bolts you never know. And look what I found. Two replacements that are exactly the same as the originals and there you go I put back the bolts that should have been there again should have been there there are now connectors in each one of the places that is required I also hung the fuel filter up where it was supposed to be after replacing it close the door this area of the bike is now complete and we're gonna finish this video doing a walk around of all the work I put in so you can see everything the way it is at the end of all the progress that we've made all the different things that we've touched and tried to improve ultimately that is the goal of my restoration videos is to improve and make better what was from the 80s and hopefully I'm doing that I'm trying my best I know I'm not perfect there probably are some things I might be able to do better. You know, you're always welcome to tell me in the comments. And I'll listen to some of them and some of them I won't. You know, I'm not sure that I've seen anybody else on YouTube that does this. I've seen some restorations where they just make the bikes run. But I think I take it a step further than that. At least with these Hondas. But you let me know. Definitely, I love to hear all comments, whatever you have to say, whether you like what I'm doing or not, whether you agree with me or not, it's all welcome. I love to hear from you all and tell me, you know what, you should do this or you should do that or it needs to be this way. Just tell me what's on your mind. But that's going to do it. If you like my videos, please subscribe and hit that notification button. That way you know all the videos to come. And give me a thumbs up if you enjoy my content. I'll see you soon with Volume 4.